Here we go. You're watching CNN. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Thank you so much for being with me uh, on your Wednesday. Uh, listen, we are just a couple of months away from selecting America's next president, and both Republicans and Democrats are as divided as ever within their own parties. Once again, the electorate is angry. The electorate playing a integral role here, but this time it is Bernie Sanders who is being asked to rein in his own supporters. After Nevada's Democratic convention spiraled into chairs being tossed and just absolute chaos there, furious Sanders supporters say Democrats are stealing the election and favoring Hillary Clinton. Some even issuing death threats to state party leaders. The chair I spoke with just yesterday told me she's threatened one every one or two seconds. Uh, U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer was booed in Nevada, and since then she tells CNN she has spoken with Senator Sanders. There was no way to control what was happening. And I did fear for my safety. I did call Bernie a couple of times and he did phone me back last night. And he was, he was very distressed um, about it. And it was a very warm conversation. And I told him, um, he expressed shock that his people would do it. I did tell him the vast majority of those Bernie supporters were sitting in their chairs, they were fine. But there was this group of 50 to 100 people. They were not young people. They were older people. And that he ought to check out to see who these people are. And he said he would. At a rally in California, Sanders uh, signaled to his supporters that the Democratic leadership is not on their side. So I say to the leadership of the Democratic Party, open the doors, let the people in. Yeah. Hmm. Senator Sanders just won the Democratic primary in Oregon. He lost uh, Kentucky to Secretary Clinton by a razor thin margin. He holds another California rally in just a couple of hours in San Jose. Let's kick this hour off with my colleague, CNN senior political correspondent Jeff Selony there in uh, California. And so, you know, the question is, obviously, it looks beautiful and calm where you are now. Is there any sense of that divisiveness that we saw in Nevada trickling over where you are in California? Well, Brooke, there's no question the feelings really at this point are so raw between the Clinton side and the Sanders side, largely because many Democrats just want to get on with this. They want to start, you know, looking forward to this race ahead with Donald Trump here. But Bernie Sanders supporters feel entitled and they want to have a vote, particularly here in California. Now, there are some 475 delegates for, uh, up here for grabs in California on June 7th. That's three more weeks of a heated contest with uh, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Now, I can tell you, among Bernie Sanders supporters, they believe that uh, this is much ado about nothing, really. They believe that they have every right to stay in. And it's important to note the Clinton campaign is not calling for them to get out at all. But, Brooke, I had an interesting conversation uh, last night after that Sanders rally with a brother and sister who are firm, committed Sanders supporters. I asked them if they would ever be able to support Hillary Clinton when she becomes the nominee. Let's listen. You think Hillary Clinton can unite the Democratic Party? I if she, think so, honestly. Why not? I know, a lot, I know a lot of people who would, even if she gets the candidacy, would refuse to vote for her because they do not believe in anything that she stands for, that she thinks she's two-faced, a liar, and they would rather vote for someone else or do a write-in ballot. They say, Bernie or bust. They just, I don't think that she can unite the party. So is it Bernie or bust for you? Well, absolutely. In the state of California, we're a firmly blue state. The Electoral College guarantees that no matter who the eventual nominee is, they will get all 55 of our electors. So there is really no reason for me to vote for Hillary Clinton in the general election. It's Bernie or bust for me. I'll write in his name. Now, Brooke, we have yet to hear directly from Bernie Sanders on this, uh, on, these, on this violence in Nevada. He talked to Senator Boxer, as we heard earlier, but he has not yet addressed it. He may do that later today here in California. Well, listen for that. But let me just pick up. We mentioned uh, Kentucky, where uh, Secretary Clinton won, but right. you know, it was very, very thin victory on terms of margins. What are you hearing from the Sanders campaign? I understand there are reports that they may be looking to to recount. It is the smallest margin of victory. We're talking just several uh, hundred votes here. But the Sanders campaign is leaving open their option to review these. Uh, they do not 
uh, think that anything is uh, wrong in the numbers at this point. Last night I talked to a senior advisor who said they were not going to uh, request a recount. Now they are saying today, the senator's spokesman is saying, they are still looking at the numbers before they make that determination. But Brooke, this sort of gets to the bigger point here that angers some Democratic Party officials and the Clinton campaign for sure. They are wondering if Bernie Sanders and his campaign are trying to you know, uh, keep hope alive unnecessarily for some of his supporters and not leveling with them in terms of the math of all this. Because the bottom line in all of this is math doesn't lie. Hillary Clinton is 88 delegates away from winning, uh, for clinching the nomination. Bernie Sanders is more than 10 times that, Brooke. So his supporters like him, no question. But the math here is the truth, and that's what we have to follow in this case. I know it's the math, but on your note of keeping hope alive, think back to 08, think back to those last little victories that Hillary Clinton right. had before she ultimately uh, bowed out. Jeff Zeleny, thank you so much. Uh, meanwhile, Bernie Sanders' campaign manager spoke out against the threats uh, that some uh, Sanders supporters have been making, specifically in Nevada, but also laid blame on the chair of the Democratic National Committee. Uh, he categorically, uh, uh, categorically condemns any kind of threats that went on. Uh, absolutely unacceptable. Uh, you know, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, we can have a long a conversation just about Debbie Wasserman Schultz and how she's been throwing shade on the Sanders campaign uh, since the very beginning. On that shade, we heard from Debbie Wasserman Schultz herself talking to Wolf moments ago. My response to that is hashtag SMH. Uh, if, if we're going to talk about throwing uh, that, that comment about throwing shade, we, we need to focus on one thing. Get through this primary and work to prepare for the general election. So I understand that there are people that would like to fan the flames and, uh, and, and you know, distract from our task at hand. That plays right into the Republicans' hands. We're going to be united and we're going to come together. Let's talk about this. Joining me now, the author of The Essential Bernie Sanders and His Vision for America, political strategist Jonathan Tassini is here, and CNN commentator Bakari Sellers, who is supporting Hillary Clinton. Gentlemen, nice to see both of you. Good to, see Good to be here, Brooke. Uh, Mr. Tassini, to you first. Uh, you know, on the, the fact that Senator Sanders had a mega platform last night, and, you know, understand the frustrations from him and folks in his campaign and supporters um, and, and their passion for Senator Sanders, but, you know, he never once sort of spoke to, to the supporters uh, and addressed what had happened in Nevada. Instead, the frustration over, listen, Democratic Party, you need to be fair, fair to us as well. Should he have said more, though? I think in the statement that he made previous to the, the rally, I didn't actually see his speech in the rally. It was late at night. I go, had to go to bed. <laughs> um, but in terms of the statement he made uh, earlier, I think he addressed it. And I think that if you also put this in context, if you look at the entire year that Bernie has ran, run in this campaign, tens of thousands of people. There's not been a single act of violence in any of those campaigns all throughout the country. And there was no violence at that convention. There was a lot of raucousness. There was yelling, you know, I've been in politics a long time and I've been at union meetings that were a lot more raucous when people were debating strike votes and lots of other things. People waved signs, when, they booed, when they yelled. chairs being flipped, no, first of all, the show chair me, of the no, convention show me one, saying that show she's me, being threatened. Well, hold on, let, let, let's separate the two things. Sure. At the convention itself. Sure. Show me one video there where it showed chairs being thrown. Bernie and everybody else, show me where the chairs are actually being thrown. There was. I reviewed some of those videos. But let's be clear. Um, everybody has said that the threats against the chair of the party, the death threats, were totally unacceptable and out right. of bounds. That is absolutely abhorrent. And I, I don't know. The delegates at the convention were not those people. People, you know, phoned in over the phone that it was posted. That was unacceptable. That was out of bounds. Nobody in the Sanders campaign supports that. And those people Here's don't. The chair. And those Steve's people, seen this. they're picking it up. Where are they throwing them? <laughs> now, this is uh, honestly, but I'll be. I've been in politics a long time. It was raucous. It was unpleasant. For some people, sometimes that's the way political conventions go. Barbara Politi Boxer said she feared for her life. Shouting. It's not nothing. All I'm saying is that, to me, the idea of freedom of speech, of being able to stand up and voice your displeasure, and let's get to the core of why people are upset, which is one thing people That's, don't want to... Let me, let me finish. I, I, let me, because, let me, because, let me because, just, let me just finish, finish that, and then, uh, then, yeah, then you can do it. The, the thing that we actually don't talk about is the fundamental question of why people got agitated, which was their feeling <laughs> that 64 delegates on, from Bernie Sanders were disenfranchised and were not allowed there. to vote. That's the core thing there's that we've no not really dug that. into. That, there's Go no ahead. excuse for that. Yep. Um, and for anyone to say that there's an excuse for that, for anyone to give an apology and use the word but, which negates everything before, uh, is not leadership. 
Um, what Bernie Sanders had the opportunity to do last night, and which he didn't, what Jeff Weaver had the opportunity to do last night and this morning was make an unequivocal apology and actually and, and show leadership for what happened. No, you're not responsible for all of your supporters, by no means. And is this all of Bernie Sanders supporters? No. It, it, in fact, it's a very small number. How, uh, however, leadership, you're running for president of the United States. You have to show that leadership. You have to show that courage, not when it's easy, but sometimes when it's difficult. Now, this isn't the first time the Democratic Party has been here. Uh, in fact, in 2008, we were here and we had Pumas, Party Unity. Well, I'm going to have to let your viewers Google uh, what, what Pumas meant. But at that time, you had Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. They both showed leadership at that point. Hillary Clinton even told her Pumas not to show up in Denver. Uh, Barack Obama actually set down Samantha Power and Jesse Jackson for some of the things they were saying about Hillary Clinton. That is the type of leadership that we have to have. But you're combining and to say, but and to yeah, say that so the, me, And to say that this yeah, process my is friend. rigged is frustrating because of the simple fact let me, I will, but let me, let me, let me, let me we're conflating many, 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 many things. Let me okay, go, the please go ahead. The, 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 the fact of the matter is that the reason that Bernie Sanders is not winning this race, has it, it's not the DNC. The fact of the matter is Hillary Clinton has three million more votes than Bernie right. Sanders, and those are facts. So, uh, fair enough. Let me separate and go back for, for a second. I do not think that in the United States of America we should say to people, you should not stand up and protest, you should not yell, you should not scream, you should not say <laughs> Absolutely. things, First which, is, which is fundamentally what happened at that convention. Because, but there's one because, thing hold in up, expressing hold, yourself but in I, the First Amendment, it's another to, to chuck chairs, threaten people. Again, I want to say, there, you, you can't tell minute. Barbara Boxer that she, when Barbara Boxer, it, who is a lioness in the Senate, I, says she feels threatened, that's okay? So, no, but I happen to think Barbara, Bo I like Barbara Barbara Boxer, and I think she's been terrific as a progressive senator, but um, whoever was yelling at her, they have the right to do that. And Barbara's in the public arena. That's part of the, the if you will, politics ain't beanbag. And I think it's a very dangerous road to go if any campaign, whether it be the Sanders campaign or the Clinton campaign, anybody says, you should not stand up and protest. You should no not voice your displeasure. That. That's very different. And I said from the beginning, and the uh, Sanders campaign has been clear, the death threats and the threats of bodily harm are totally unacceptable in political discourse. I do want to say now to Bakari's other point about the questions between the Pumas, the, the ongoing conflict. Look. We have a party that is divided about fundamental issues, and I think that's going to express itself at the convention. That does not mean, in my opinion, that we can't come out of the convention and know that whoever's the nominee, we have to defeat Donald Trump. Can but we thank you for bringing yeah, him up? Because yeah. this is my final thought, and I love this conversation, and I appreciate it. And I think that I'm wondering if Donald Trump, we talk so much about the rift in the Civil War, whatever the headline was in the, in the Republican Party. I mean, is he just kicking it and loving well, this because well, it looks, it's painting a rosier well, the, picture the, on his the, side? Well, the, the, issues, the issues that Democrats have are issues that are not. Uh, the politics of personal destruction, although there are some instances of that. Uh, Donald Trump engaged in the politics of personal destruction. You saw that with Jeb Bush. You saw that with, with Ted Cruz. You saw that with Marco Rubio. The list goes on and on and on. And so those rifts may not be able to be mended. Uh, this, what we have right now is, is a vacuum. And, and all I'm asking for, I'm not asking for anything that's, that's special or anything that's outrageous. I just want Bernie Sanders. I'm asking Bernie Sanders to step up at this moment in time uh and show the leadership that we all know that he's capable so of doing. That's so all I, I'm saying. If I can respond to two Please. things quickly. Yeah. The vacuum is partly the incompetence, and I consider the um, moral bankruptcy of Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I think she should resign this week. Uh, she, be, she, be, she should be replaced by other people who are much more independent. She has lost complete, uh, we have. Because why, no, what would you like to well, see her do instead? Well, well, first of all, this has a long history, going back to what we think has been a fairly uh, her attempt to tip uh, the scales towards the Clinton campaign when she uh, didn't organize enough debates, when she put them at times that people wouldn't watch. There's a feeling of mistrust between the Sanders campaign and Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I think someone like Donna Brazil, Tulsi Gabbard, any of the other DNC chairs should be the temporary chairs of the convention okay. if we want to have an orderly convention. Okay. But I do think Bernie Sanders has shown enormous leadership throughout this uh, campaign and continues to do so as he calls for political revolution, which, yes, is a challenge to the party. We have to go. I appreciate both of you. Again, we, he's holding this rally again in California. Will he say anything? You say he's, he's you know, exemplified his leadership, shown his leadership, and you're asking for more. We'll see. Uh, Bakari and Jonathan, thank you for now. Thank you. Uh, quick programming note for you tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, pat, pat him on the back. <laughs> no, I, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. I owe a pizza. There you, you know go. Uh, I'll take a slice. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow afternoon. He'll